Welcome to Under the Wings Helmet. I'm Kyle Simmons. And as always, I'm joined by former Michigan and NFL offensive lineman Thomas Gwines. This week's episode is sponsored by Jabs Gym. Learn the fundamentals of boxing through high-intensity cardio and strength workouts with locations in Metro Detroit, the Eastern Market, Ferndale, and Birmingham. We would also like to thank Juke. You can purchase their gear at jukefootball.com. As we all know, the Wolverines are under NCAA investigation for alleged sign stealing involving low-level staffer Connor Stallions. It's alleged that Stallions purchased tickets to over 30 games and used illegal technology to steal play call signs from opponents. This week, Stallions has been accused of being on the sidelines for the Central Michigan versus Mich Michigan State game earlier this season. It's also been alleged that Ohio State coach Ryan Day hired the PR firm his own brother works for to investigate Michigan, which led to this entire investigation. Because we've been away for the last week, we haven't had a chance to talk about this. So, Thomas, what's your take on this entire story? I mean, at the end of the day, I really feel like it's it's kind of a witch hunt. Um, there really hasn't been a whole bunch of credible information that's been put out there. Uh, I think that this is a very emotion-driven investigation by a lot of parties involved. When you hear about what the allegations are and you look at what the actual ramifications could be, for my understanding of it, unless there were some sort of electronic devices. I think that was kind of sort of the big, the, the big deal that I got out of it from the NCAA aspect. There really isn't anything that I saw that Michigan has done or any sort of real sanctions that can be placed based off of these particular allegations. Um, it, it's definitely um, sad if this really came down to a Ohio State coach wanting to reach out to his brother to go basically try to dig up some dirt on the Wolverines. Um, I, I definitely feel like that doesn't, you know, speak well of Ryan Day as a coach and or a man. I'm also a huge proponent of, I don't care if you know what we're doing, you still got to stop it. You still got to block, you still got to tackle. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things in, in culmination – really just spark more of a distraction at this point as far as giving the media world and sports pundits something to talk about. But as far as what's actually going to be taking place, um, I don't really foresee a lot of, uh, I don't really foresee a lot of sanctions and or real issues coming down for, for the Wolverines. You look at what the president of the university has done as well Seemingly from all intents and purposes, he's backing up Coach Harbaugh saying this is our guy. So um, you would think that as the president of the university that he would have a lot more information than what we're getting out here just as casual fans. So sit back, enjoy the entertainment, grab your popcorn. But um, it's depending on what side of the, the fence you're on. If you're part of Wolverine Nation, I think, you know, you should be pleased with the outcome. If you're going to be part of the other individuals, it's probably going to be a pretty anticlimactic ending and probably not what it is that you're looking for. As long as we keep winning, I think that, you know, that quiets all of the noise. We just got to continue to go out there and do our job. Um, having this week off is going, was huge, in my opinion. Get a lot of the nicks and bruises healed up. Let guys kind of recenter themselves. Let the team and the coaches recenter themselves and continue to have this big push towards the second half of the Big Ten season. Now, I just want to touch on it a little bit more because the, the media has been been kind of, you know, jabbing at Michigan saying that they haven't been able to say the Michigan's being silent on this. But from my understanding, when you're under NCAA investigation, you're not allowed to speak on this. So I, I agree with this kind of being a media witch hunt and just media pun. It's just kind of dragging a story out for ratings and clicks yeah i mean definitely it's you know it's it's us right it's it's the team with the funky helmets it's the block M, it's the arrogant michigan guys and you know as we're going on this three in a row push as far as being big 10 champs getting back to the ncaa playoffs and hopefully getting deeper in, in, into that pool of play um what 
what bigger story could there be? What's going to sell, you know, those those ad positions and like you said, getting those clicks and, and getting all of that that attention than to say that the mighty Michigan Wolverines were quote unquote cheating in some way, shape, or form. Again, I, I go back to uh the, the Belichick days, right? What really happened to Coach Belichick? If there's a suspension, we we've gone through the suspension thing, right? All right, Jimmy, you can't coach. Okay, next man up. Again, this is why football is the greatest team sport, not only just from the player aspects of things, but things happen in life. And as a coach, if for whatever reason a particular coach can't be there, then again, it's, it should be next man up. And I think we've done a really good job as far as establishing a highly skilled, highly motivated, highly capable coaching staff that if Coach Harbaugh was not, you know, at the helm of the ship, that one of his first mates, if you will, could definitely step up and guide us through, you know, these waters as, like I said, we're getting to that second half of the season. So we'll see what happens. But you know what? Hey, stop it. You still got to block and tackle. Mm -hmm. And I think – this is going to maybe put a bigger uh, magnifying glass on college football as a whole, because if, and that's a big, if we did anything wrong or if we did anything that other schools haven't also been doing, then the NCAA needs to take out some of the ambiguity as far as what the rule set is and what the, what the punishments and or sanctions could be. But until there's an actual ruling, Hey, just line up and play football. I agree. So until we actually hear something actually valid from the NCAA, I don't think there's much right. more we can talk about talk about this story, you know? Mm -hmm. So definitely that. So we're gonna move on from it. So um this past Tuesday, the college football playoff rankings were released. Ohio State is ranked number one, followed by Georgia at number two. The Wolverines are at three, and Florida State is at number four. Uh, Thomas, uh, do you think the college football play, playoff committee got these rankings right to start? I always say this <clears throat> when it comes to rankings. Rankings are cool for the flex, as the kids say today. You still got to go play the game. We had a bye week, so I think that might have hurt us when it, quote, unquote, comes to ranking just because we haven't played. But, uh, you know, we've been putting up good numbers. The schedule is the schedule. We play the teams that have been put out in front of us. So with all of these other teams having the opportunity to to play within that past week, I think the bye week hurt us as far as the rankings go. But in the big scheme of things, as long as we continue to press the gas on the upcoming opponents, get the W's, get some, some lofty numbers there, get some style points, if you will, we'll be right there. We'll definitely be in consideration for whatever comes down the pipe. Obviously, the goal right now is win the Big Ten championship, get a third ring for the boys, and then let college football do what it does. But, you know, obviously, we, we should be getting that automatic berth going into the playoffs and see what happens from there, see how it all shakes out from there. This Saturday, the Michigan Wolverines host Purdue this Saturday for a, a 7.30 kickoff at the Big House. The Boilermakers are 2-6 and six on the season, 1-4 and four in the Big Ten coming off a, la a loss last week to Nebraska. So what do you think we need to do to get the W this Saturday and uh, also get ready for this final stretch of the season? As with all things, especially when we're playing teams that are on a bit of a on a downslide, um, just be prepared for their best shot. Again, what better way is there to, you know, uh, resurrect your season than to come into the big house and beat the number three ranked team in the country? Uh, from watching the Purdue Nebraska game, Purdue's got some guys, but overall, I'm not seeing anything that's overly impressive about their team. I think this should definitely be another big score game. I think our defense, our front seven, um, against their offensive line definitely should be able to get home. Um, we got to continue to keep the ball inside and in front and just stick to the basics right now. I think just based off, if you match this up, mono we mono, our horses against their horses, the Wolverines definitely should come out on top instead and stand head and shoulders above the Boilermakers. But like I said, we have to guard against playing down to the level of our opponent's capabilities and also just the common things we talk about week in and week out. 
ball security, win the turnover battle, and then just go out there and press the gas to the point where from a attrition standpoint, we got to make these boys just not want to play. Then we got to make them start looking up at the clock and like, damn, we still got, you know, another quarter to go because we're just hitting them with body shots after body shots. And like I said, halfway through that third quarter, that's when you actually see the the spirit start to wither. And then that's when the fun really starts. So I'm hoping by end of the third quarter, maybe even a whole fourth quarter, we have our twos, twos and threes in. Again, I think that's huge, just getting those guys some valuable game time and not just garbage time, you know, a couple, two, three minutes left in the game, getting certain guys in. So allowing the guys to get in during, you know, some meaningful game time and allowing them to have an opportunity to execute either defensively or offensively. So that's going to be huge. But I'm not foreseeing any huge hurdles the Wolverines need to uh, traverse at this point based off the the effort that I saw the Boilermakers put against the Cornhuskers. And in other news, our boy JJ is the leading favorite to win the Heisman. So what do you think of his chances to finish this thing out and bring home that trophy? Well, you know, like I've always said, the when you, we started talking about Heisman talk during my tenure, had the opportunity to block for Tyrone Wheatley. And um, it's a team thing, you know. It's just going out there. you got to stay healthy. Football, again, greatest team sport. But when we start looking at individual, um, individual performances, J.J.'s out there doing a thing. And because of the fact that we are winning, we are undefeated, as Coach used to tell us, when we win, everybody gets to eat. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's JJ's time. JJ shows a great arm. I think, you know, as we talked about earlier on in the season, a lot of his overall passing mechanics have improved and his decision making has improved. I think JJ has really shown his ability to go out there and be a, a field general, a uh, extra coach, if you will. And the other thing about JJ, too, is, is that his level of play is just infectious. Even when he's out of the game and the other quarterbacks have an opportunity to go in, or, or any of the twos. And when you see these guys do well and scoring touchdowns and the camera pans back over to J.J., just his level of excitement, even when he's not in the game, he's in the game. And he's in there for his teammates and, and, and being one of the biggest cheerleaders on the sideline for whoever's in there. So I think that just speaks volumes as far as the type of young man and the type of teammate that uh, J.J. is. And that's all for this week's episode of Under the Wayne Helmet. Thank you to our sponsors, Jab Jim and Juke. Also, be sure to check out Under the Wings Helmet merchandise at ASAPElite.com and come back while we preview next week's game. And be sure to listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and the Believe Podcast Network. You can also watch us on ASAPElite.com and the ASAPElite YouTube channel. For Thomas Gwines, I'm Kyle Simmons. Go Blue. Go Blue. 